Between Ops Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we cut a thread for the compound slide top nut. We start off by grinding the tool form and to be honest I've had two attempts. The first tool was cutting okay and I heard a crack and I thought that's a tip broke but when I took the tool out the bore the tool holder had actually cracked. The second tool I ground from a solid piece of steel and that did the job. So let's go into the workshop and see how we do it. I've just changed my grinding wheel from a grit grinding wheel to this diamond grinding wheel and what I want to do is cut a tool to make an acme thread with a 2.5 millimeter pitch for the compound slide. What I have in this holder is a piece of, um, it's an old drill that's broken off so it should be high speed steel. What I want to do is put a 15 degree slope on each side. So by putting it in this, this tool holder, the tool in the holder is up against the face, this face here. I've swiveled the axis from 90 degrees to 15 degrees so it's going to put me a 15 degree flat on this side. Speed starting. There you can see the, the tip. On the tool tip I've ground a 15 degree angle on the side that also has an 8 degree angle on the edge. Take this out the tool holder, turn it around the other side. I can't turn it upside down to do the other way because it's a compound angle. Put it back in the tool holder the other way. Change the angle from this side over to this side. So this time I'm cutting on the back of the wheel so I'll reverse the wheel and grind on this side. So now I've ground that side and the other side 15 degree with an 8 degree. So now I'm putting a 5 degree angle in top rake and it's square. There you can see the, the top. So all I have to do now is to put a flat on the top that's the width of the thread that I'm cutting. Now I've put the tool square to the wheel but there is this 8 degree angle so it's going to cut an, an angle. So there, if you look on the top, you see I've put a flat on the, the tip, that flat is at an angle. I've just made a washer with a, a cutout, and that fits in the end, so you can unscrew the nut without burning the top. Because there's nothing worse than catching your knuckle on the nut with a sharp edge on. Let's take the handle off. 
then you need to undo the grub screws now these have a spring inside with a little brass pad so let's chip that upside down there's a the spring there's the brass pad same with the other one take the grub screw out tip it upside down it's a spring and pad oops now that will come off just a solid steel dial this comes off it's hollow you've got an oil filler on the top and these are the thrust bearings one screw in the thread Take like these bearings off before I lose them. There's the screw. And what I want to do is get the tool that I'm making. Just take the bearing off. Don't want to lose these bearings. What I was trying to do is get the tool shape to fit there's no play on that I don't think that's far off when it's held square in the lathe obviously it should fit all I have to watch is the width but it's 15 degree each side and a flat bottom which looks very similar the only other thing I need to do to the tool is cut the length down I'm making the nut for this so this tool has to go into the nut and it probably wants to be chopped off at least half of that's got to go so there's the tool I may have to adjust that in the holder there because the bore size is about 7 mil. that's about 9 mil. so I'll have to push it through a bit. Just setting up my cut, thread cutting tool I've put the, this is the main screw off the compound slide and I'm just setting the tool up to match the thread. So first thing I want to do is just touch the tool on the OD, I'll use some feeler gauges just down the side Bring it out so it grips the feeler gauge. Set my dial to zero. Now I'll line it with one of the grooves. Move it in till it touches the bottom. It's about there. That's gone in. 65 thou less the 3 thou on the feeler gauge that's 62 thou so that will be my depth of cut 62 thou and now I know that my tool is a bit narrower than the, the thread so what I'll do is move it backwards till it touches the edge of the tool I'm zeroing my direct readout and then move it forward and that's giving me six thou so once I've reached the depth I need to widen the thread by six thou when I did that I did lock the compound slide by tightening the the grub screws on the jib strip so that it doesn't move this is my new nut I've marked down from the top seven mil where the thread will be cut. This is a 0.625 diameter bar of phosphor bronze and I think it's about 32 mil long. Um, I've marked there the hole where I need to drill a quarter inch hole through 
to start the thread. And I've just put the piece of phosphor bronze in the lathe and I'm adjusting it so that the line that I scribed is in line with the centre drill. So I need to undo this side slightly and tighten this side up. It's not that critical. I don't know whether you can see the line that looks about in line with the centre drill so I know I've got the right distance up and down to the scribe mark now I need to know that I'm in centre it doesn't look like it left and right and it looks as if it's out of line so the only way I can do that is to put a dial indicator on the chuck jaws and check these two chuck jaws. From this view this is the components I'm trying to central backwards and forwards. This is the back of my four jaw chuck jaw. I'm just going to rock the bring the dial indicator in and just rock the chuck until I get the lowest reading which is there bring that to zero, let's pull the dial indicator out by hand at the back, turn it round to the other jaw, let the dial indicator in, lower it down, get the lowest reading which is there, so that's 3000, so I'll make that zero, the lowest reading one two that's two revolutions out so that needs to go in a bit zero it back up there down that should be a thou now within a half a thou, let's make sure it is one turn, yeah, so that's within half a thou, that'll do. to reground a solid tool because the inserts are ground as you can see I had a crack and when I wound the tool out the boring bar had snapped snapped across there where the hole is so that was no good so I've reground a new tool out of a solid piece and that seems to be working okay I'm using my new thread dial indicator wait for the letter to come round I'll set my uh, digital readout to zero just as it comes on the other side of that hole so I can switch it off. You could use the dial indicator in the stop, engage the lead screw. Disengage, wind 
it back, bring it out, cut on, engage a lead screw. Disengage, move it back, move it out, put another cut on. Ok I'll show you a few things that I do so you know where you are. The zero is fully back so I can wind the tool out without the tool touching the bore. And when I put the cut on, bring it forward, you can see a red mark there. That's the last cut I did so I'll bring it forward a bit further, wipe that red mark off and put another red mark on with the China Graph pencil. So I always know where I was on the last cut and when I back it up to bring it out, zero, bring the tool out, put the cut back on and come round and because you've marked it, you know that's where you were last time, you can add a cut to that. Another tip, if you have DRO fitted what I do is I put the tool into the workpiece just so it pokes out the back of the workpiece and then I'll zero my y-axis so when it goes to zero I know the tool has cleared the bore and I can stop the lathe, wind the tool back. What I'm looking at is the negative sign. As soon as that disappears, I'll stop the machine. Zero. And because you've marked it, you know that's where you were last time, you can add a cut to that. So what I do when I'm doing the threads because it's for this screw on the compound slide I've already stripped down the take the dial off so so I can use it as a gauge to check the bore the thread in the bore I've put a dial indicator on the back of my tool post and I'm going to take the take this screw out Move the other one. And you can undo your screw. Try the fit on the ball. That's it. Okay, to fit the new bush, first thing to do is take your compound slide off.
slacken off the grub screws on the slide. And slide that along. This is where the nut fits in there. It, that goes in with the thread down. Then you take your screw, make sure you've got all the bearings fitted on there. It goes through the hole into the new nut. Then tighten the grub screw to hold the nut body. And put the two cap heads back in on the end. We can return this back into the slide tighten up all the grub screws to hold the jib strip and that will remove some of the play the dial brass disc spring grub screw These are just friction discs to hold the dial. Move it round to the next hole. Disc. Spring. Group screw. Grub screw goes into this little dimple in the shaft. The nut on the end. ready to use again. Oh well, I got there in the end after a second thread cutting tool. I hope you enjoyed that, hope it was useful and if you liked it why not subscribe. And we'll see you next time on Enos Engineering.